Hello, my lovely loves. How are you? Um, I'm good. I'm gonna talk about the program today, our ego, um, that we all have, and um, uh, I would say the difference between an enlightened, awakened being and someone who's not is that they also have an ego, but the difference is that they are not lost in it, not giving it all their power and all their attention thus they're not stuck in suffering because the ego or program um, does lead to a lot of suffering and the things that i'm going to mention about the ego today i'm not bringing them up for us to hate the ego to resist it more because what you resist persists and um, to judge it i'm bringing it up so that when whenever it stands in the way of us and fully enjoying the present moment we can observe it, understand, oh, this is a program with its different taxi, tactics and uh, techniques. Tactics and techniques to that don't allow us to be enjoying the present moment. Um, and when you observe it, then it loses its power. When you take a step back and you get centered and rooted in your soul, which is love and awareness and peace and trust, then you can enjoy fully the present moment and you realize that you're not the ego. You're not your personality. You're not that voice in the head. We have a voice in our head commenting on everything we do or what others do, commenting commenting as if it were a football game on everything that happens. Uh, oh, I'm going to put this here or like then I'm going to go and I'm going to sit here or whatever, whatever. And then we give this voice all our power sometimes it talks or a lot of times it talks bad about us or uh, I'm not worthy of this or I shouldn't have done that or she shouldn't have done this or what if this and this and this happened and then you paint the voice paints like worst case scenarios all these thoughts this voice in our head narrating everything it's not who we are uh, sometimes it talks very good about you for example like oh I'm the best soccer player I scored the most goals this year in the league. I'm very handsome. Everyone wants me, etc., etc. Um, again, this is all fine. These these voices, like it's fine, but eventually it will lead to suffering because if you believe that you are that personality, um, then whenever, because nothing of the personality is constant or forever or eternal so some someday is going to be taken away for you from you and then maybe you lose your talent or someone else scores more goals or you're not a good player anymore or you get old so and then you don't look good uh, or you're in an accident and you don't look good or whatever if you have identified so much with your looks and your talents and what you do your name or your country because we identify with that too our culture our education our profession whatever if that's taken away from you then you'll suffer if you have invested all your energy and identified completely with being that um also you'll uh, defend it the ego identifies as i said with places with professions uh, like you think you are your name your country your culture um, your background what's happened to you the traumas you think that's who you are then if someone attacks that or has a different opinion or view or belief than you, since you have identified so much with whatever it is that they're attacking, whether it's your nationality or your opinion or your belief or whatever, then the ego thinks that it has to defend itself because the ego doesn't have any real substance. It's not real. It's an illusion at the end of the day so so it's only way to survive is you giving it, it your attention and then when it feels attacked uh, or challenged by another viewpoint or belief saying that no you're wrong then you believe that you're wrong in the core if you identify with the ego and that they're attacking you and your life so you have to fight for your life that's what the ego is doing that's why you get so defensive and you'd want and need everyone else to be to agree with you or to acknowledge that you're right or you have the right belief or whatever it is and to like survive but it's all illusion because you're not that and there's no need to defend 
your soul because meanwhile the soul your soul is like uh, in hammock mode like i say like putting it's hit your hands uh behind your neck and just chilling knowing that all is good knowing that you're peace and that you're eternal love and total innocence because guilt is also an illusion guilt and shame um there's this um, theory which really resonates with me uh and again i know that i don't know so it could be wrong but let's see if maybe it resonates with you if it does cool if it doesn't cool too um it really resonates with me that this guilt that we all have and it can be very some people don't perceive it that's like the ego defense not wanting to feel not wanting to see thinking no no no, i don't have that um because if you see it then it starts dissolving um but we have this guilt intrinsic guilt and feeling that we're erroneous doing something wrong and then we project this guilt onto other people and um uh, and blame others for the way we feel and this guilt this that i really resonate with is that it comes from the idea which ult which ultimately is an illusion too that we have separated from god that we have separated from the universe from love and then we feel guilty and then this takes shapes in many different ways in different emotions because if you feel guilty then you automatically expect a punishment so you get scared you feel fear of a punishment so sometimes you even prefer to like attack others before they attack you um not only like physically because if you do get attacked physically in this dimension please do defend yourself um uh, but mostly most of our conflicts are all in our mind and thinking that someone else can attack you and you feel offended and you feel you need to defend and and, and it's because of this intrinsic guilt and fear of punishment um thinking we're separate um and this also takes expression as anger of course and frustration because we also think the ego thinks that it has to control life that has to control the circumstances and other people they have to behave in a certain way love me in a certain way things have to go and go this way we think from our small self our program mind that we control things but we do not and what's very very beautiful is that we are so loved and so guided um the many times the best thing we can do is just not do anything at all and just rest and chill i'm not i'm not really talking about action wise like of course there are things that we do in this physical world and i'm not saying you're going to stay and not do anything but from your little program self from our ego chill like stop doing and then put your ego aside one very cool key way of putting your ego aside is saying i don't know i don't know and i trust i don't know i don't have to know and i trust and i feel and then the ego doesn't really know what to do with that and then you keep your attention in feeling not from your mind but like really like feeling and then when we stop doing the universe can flow freely through us and 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 really create miracles and everything will flow better when we don't try to control it from our small self even like sometimes we're like super tired our our bodies our minds are tired uh then i've noticed recently too like i can be in one moment of the day super positive and optimistic about my situation about where i am and what i'm doing and everything and about life in general just thankful and then when i'm really tired then i start getting like negative thoughts and i lose my attention to them and i get more pessimistic and 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 then recently i realized i'm like kiro stop you're tired it's not time to think right now just rest your body's asking you to rest your mind wants to rest so then go to bed rest if you can even if you're like busy and you you have things that you really think that you have to do if you can have a 5 10 15 20 minute break that that's why i say like we're so loved and and supported because when you just rest in that and don't do anything life energy comes back into us we are we get renewed our body has its like own intelligence too and knows what's to, what to do if you just give it space and time to do it that's why fasting also can be very a very nice tool because you really give your body the chance to 
recover and do some processes that it can't do when it's already when it's always spending all its energy on digesting food um so take breaks breathe just let yourself be because we are i am whatever you put after that it just limits because you i am you know we're consciousness that has limitless potential um and our personalities are never going to be perfect um we don't have to fix our personalities like we have the tendency if we see something in our personality or our behavior that we don't like then we want to fix it meaning we have judged it and again what you resist persists so if you judge it it's not going to disappear and then we go to the other extreme and for just as one example let's say we have taken up a lot of space been very um getting a lot of attention and not letting others get attention maybe we talk a lot and talk too much and then someone maybe has pointed this out or you have noticed it then you're like oh i don't like that i i need to get quiet i'm, I'm not going to say anything i'm just going to stay silent in a corner not take up any space and that's like going to the other extreme and fixing we think our personality but we're, we're still judging it so after a while in the other extreme we're going to go back to the other extreme and then we're just going between extremes in this duality world and the key is to just notice just observe accept allow and feel so if you notice something in personality that you don't like like accept it know that you couldn't have done anything better uh, given your state of consciousness you're really doing your best given your state of consciousness uh unconsciousness is innocent because if you're not conscious like how are you how are you going to know so you're you were lost in program lost in game you can't judge that so when you just allow okay this okay um uh, then you can accept it feel it and and also know that you are not that behavior you're not your action you're not your trauma <clears throat> you're not your personality or characteristics then you're the soul behind it then it kind of transforms and and next time a situation comes up and you feel drawn to act in a certain way the, the same way that you've always acted that you don't really like or you feel drawn to the extreme and do the opposite just take a breath observe it and then just just let it be and 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 many times then you can let the universe act through you and speak through you and uh when you stop judging the different behaviors and as a side effect we don't do it with any expectations but as a side effect many times your your personality or personalities do get more cool more chill for you to have around because they they will be around and for others to be around because you're not that personality that has to defend itself or that if he gets judged feels attacked because you know that you're not your personality so you can even laugh at it have some distance to it laugh at it and just give it love in the recent ayahuasca ceremony i saw my ego as like a kid playing in its room and i was just letting it be and just seeing it with so much innocence not judging it understanding that it will be there as long as we're here in in this dimension and and it's cool it's nothing wrong with it and it also allows us to have this experience of of separation which ultimately is an illusion but it allows us to be here and and be in a body we're not our body but we are in one and experiencing this 3D world and we can enjoy it you can enjoy your different personalities i certainly do um we have different tendencies and traits that have a tendency to come out and express themselves in different ways and the the more you understand that you're not them the more they get like infused with just divine divine just letting it's the god the universe expressing itself through you and you become come more transparent and it expresses itself through you but it's still through your body and through your mind so it will have certain characteristics which is really cool and we have different ways of expressing ourselves in artistic ways and that's really cool and and we have different talents that usually are very connected with with our medicine with uh, with with what you can give to the world and and the yeah um the ego also likes to compare it compares this moment to another moment that you were in the same place 
same holiday, uh, same place or same same time, but of this of the year, but in a different place. And and that moment was better, or that place was better, or or this moment would be better if we didn't have if we had this and this and that. Like it never allows you to be present and enjoy fully the the present moment and it compares other people to these people wow they're so awakened or they're so amazing and so loving or so talented way better than me or judging people as being way less way way worse people and not as good as me uh, not so loving very closed minded um, or whatever it is and uh and the people that we have put on a pedestal, whenever they do something that is not aligned with what with our expectations on them and what we thought about them, the box that we had put them in, if they do something that's not aligned with that, then we're like, oh, oh wait a minute. And the ego loves it. Finally, he can take it down from the pedestal to, to feel better about itself. That's why the ego compares. And... Uh, and then it will bring them down, 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 down from the pedestal and further down than the other uh, the other people that were were at the bottom before. And um, it's just important to to notice these these comparisons. And uh, and again, like also like identifying it identifies with the profession or whatever and feels the needs to defend it. Like I am a teacher and then someone sends an article about all teachers are crap or whatever it is, then feel a need to defend that because you think that I am a teacher. That's what I am. No, it's what you do. It's not what you, who you are. And then, um, um, just noticing this can be really liberating to notice. Oh, okay. It's trying to compare this and that person or a past version of me and with an, a per, uh, with present moment pre- present version of me or always it tries to evaluate too even like on the spiritual path like how well am i doing how am i doing on this path of forgiveness or of awakening constantly evaluating comparing judging it's just very liberating to to observe that and, and I, for example, like I identify sometimes with the countries that I like, for example, uh, Brazil. I love Brazil. I like the Brazilian flag. I went to see a soccer game and I cried the other day when Brazil scored, like cried of happiness. I'm also like super sensitive now. So I think I was picking up on the other people's emotions, too. Um, but it kind of like represented uh, their success in the World Cup in a, in a way like represented my move here because I just moved here. And it feels so right. And I was just so happy about it. And I identify with Brazil because I really enjoy their cultures and and um, have really amazing brothers and sisters here. And so that's an identification. So I've noticed that with also with places like I used to live in Miami. If someone would like critique Miami and say Miami is crap, then I would like feel the need to defend it. But <laughs> it's not who I am. That's So that's the ego. It's important to observe it. And I and it's okay. Like it's cool. Like we can. We're here to enjoy, too, and enjoy duality and play with it. And and um, and in a soccer game, you're cheering for one team, and and the happiness you feel if you succeed and your team wins is at the cost of of the other team being sad and whatever. So it's still duality, but it's okay. It's cool, and it's it's fi- totally fine to to enjoy it too just know that it's like identifying and and i'm more saying it in in for the situations to know it in the situations when the ego is not letting you enjoy when it's causing suffering which it oftentimes does the ego even fears love and high vibrations because again if when we start observing it that's all it takes to dissolve observing it and, and accepting it that's all it takes to for the egos to start dying so to speak and it doesn't want that. It's an illusion. I want to keep staying alive. And um, so it fears love and consciousness and high vibrations because it doesn't survive in that. It doesn't survive in the truth of love. So it fears that. And sometimes it doesn't want to hang out with people of higher vibrations um, because then um, certain aspects of the subconscious and the ego comes up to surface to heal. So if I'm not that voice, if I'm not my ego and my thoughts and my emotions, who am I? It's a good question. 
um, I invite to meditate on it. Maybe ask the question, like, who am I? Sometimes the ego will come up with a really quick answer, but, oh, you're Kiro, or whatever name you have, or, or you're, even, you could even say, like, oh, you're an eternal soul, soul, duh, and, and then, like, it's another way the ego has of kind of, like, giving a very simple and um, superficial answer, or, and, like, that, that way, like, judging the question and not allowing for, for deeper experience so if you see that if you if you notice that when you've asked the question who am i then just say no i don't know i don't know and it's okay and you keep feeling and maybe they will come and answer to you maybe not maybe there's no way of putting it into words uh who you are uh, because you simply are but maybe the answer would come to you gradually subtly as an emotion that keeps growing maybe an emotion of trust or just like an alignment with being with your soul and just accepting that and trusting i don't know where well, you can find out and um it can be scary for for the ego that has associated itself because it's very important to us like who am i um but it's very liberating also to say i don't know and realize that you are not your relations or or attachments or emotions and thoughts and that voice in the head and with meditation it will be more and more easy to experience this and and yeah it's very liberating so if you're if you're like me very curious and then you might ask yourself like what but why why are we here why are why do we have this experience why is there so much suffering and so many diseases and why have I chosen to come here? Because I do believe we choose to come here. Why? Why is this happening? Why is there an existence? And and the answer to that that most resonates with me is as actually something that I initially read a few years ago in the book um, a Conversations, Conversations, Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. It's a New York bestseller, I think. And um, it says that God or universal consciousness knew conceptually how amazing it was, it is. and uh, But it wasn't enough to just know it conceptually. It wanted to experience, to feel it experientially and know it experientially. So in order to do that, it had to like take a step out and look to be able to look back to itself and say, wow, this is amazing. Uh, and... In, in order to feel and really, really, truly know what love is, it had to experience its opposites. Anger and guilt and frustration and sadness and sorrow and pain to know what pure enjoyment and, and love and innocence really feels like, what it, what, what it is like to, to experience it fully. And I, I think that's pretty beautiful. And we're here, we're here to experience that. And the more you align in your eternal soul, you realize that this whole separation of taking a step out was just an illusion to have this experience. And you ne really never left God consciousness. That's what we are. And um, and for me, staying more centered and rooted, it's allowed me to. Because uh, a lot of things have happened in my life this past year and a half or two, and I believe that's true for many people. And um, things didn't really work out the, the way I had planned it. My small self, my programmed ego, had planned things to be. And I'm 30 now, and I really want kids. And I had a relationship for six years, and we're planning to have kids. And, and now we're not together anymore. And it's not how I had planned my life, how, how, how I had visioned it to be 30 and, and and single with no kids and not knowing really where I'm going to be or uh, I'm also far away from my dogs I haven't seen them for seven months and I miss them like crazy and I cry a lot um, but I've been able to observe that attachment and, and, and process it by feeling it accepting it and um, I also had a lot of pain a couple months ago I was sick I got a bacteria and had a lot of pain and just for a few months f f things felt like they were really not flowing for me and nothing worked out the way my small self had planned it and 
and and and I felt like, you know, if this would have happened a few years ago, I would really really suffer. The only reason for reason for suffering is not allowing something to be and accepting it for what it is. And I I most of the time I really did, even during these like hard times, so to speak. And the hardest thing was probably when I had like the very intense physical pain, which of course I, I did suffer, but also. I did surrender and accept it and just like would go to bed and like fall asleep and and uh, or just if I couldn't fall asleep just accept it and it wasn't it wasn't really that bad and now for the past few weeks things have really been flowing externally I am where I, where I want to be uh, things are flowing um, I meet nice people and I feel really good in, in my body now too and and of course I enjoy it and of course it's like easier to accept reality when, when things are going smoothly and it's nice and I totally enjoy it fully as I should but I'm also like not so lost in it because I know that that things go up and down in this three dimensional world and I can't invest all my my, my state of mind my, my well being cannot depend on these external circumstances so I have this intrinsic peace now most of the time that I just align with that and just let be so my lows are not as low my highs are not as high in this it's the same intense way that depended on its opposite so like I would be so so ex- extremely happy when when all things go well because before they sucked and now it goes well but I'm still enjoying it <clears throat> as fully and uh and we have access to this piece, this center in ourselves, where in our soul in the hammock mode, like I said, that just knows that every little thing is gonna be all right. In Hakuna Matata and all that, <laughs> it just has a trust and a peace within, despite what happens on an external level. And it's open twenty four seven, every day, Monday through Sunday, three hundred sixty five days a year for free and uh, through meditation is really the key to access that and being in a meditative state throughout the day even when you you do take actions and your breath really helps you align with this state of consciousness too another aspect of the ego uh, a tool for it to not allow you to enjoy the present moment um, because it's very lost it's not there to be mean to you uh, but it's part of of this process of awakening that we have chosen and of this process of experiencing opposites um, in order to experience really and know what true love and happiness and peace and joy is Uh, so another tool is is, is seriousness is it called seriousness or seriosity i don't know i think it's seriousness (laughs) um it takes everything so serious so it starts feeling like a weight on your shoulder and everything you have to do if you don't send this essay before sunday then i mean life will end if i if i don't make this report or if i don't make such and such amount of money or if i um don't get that car or if people judge this project that i made or whatever like it takes everything so serious as as if life depended on it and or if i miss this flight (laughs) life the world will end and it's not like something that you're like consciously thinking because you you know that it won't but subconsciously you're thinking it and like it causes a stress that is so not healthy and just primarily primarily just so so not nice to experience so being more chill not taking things so serious just play around be more childlike play with innocence and laugh laugh about your ego and this is a good example of how the ego wants to go between different uh, opposites um the other opposite from being very 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 serious which i think is what we most most of us tend to do most most of the time the other opposite is not taking anything serious And I mean when it's like in a very high extreme that it's like it becomes a mechanism in order not to feel. You can't even sit down and have a talk. And I'm not saying that we have to sit down and have a serious talk, like be very, very serious right now. No, but I mean more like when 
you know, when you get so, you're like so on the other extreme of, of seriousness that you're just, you can't take anything serious. You're just like, um, you, you, you judge a bullet or like you can't take responsibility. I'll mention responsibility in a second. Um, because you just like joke about everything. So that's the other extreme. But in overall, just being more playful, more childlike and not take things so seriously is, uh, is very liberating and takes a weight off your shoulder and makes things uh, flow smoothly and nicely and you can enjoy the present moment. About responsibility, it's funny how words are and how we connect them and how they're like charged with emotions because many of us connect that automatically with guilt or a heavy weight, a burden, sacrifice, effort. But true responsibility doesn't have any percentage of guilt in it. We are innocence, as I said, unconsciousness is innocent. We are total innocence. That's our our essence. And true responsibility is actually a way for you to reclaim your power. Because when you truly take responsibility with no guilt, you realize that you're you're responsible for the way you perceive the world. Every people, every person in, in every situation is a perfect opportunity that your soul has chosen, I believe, to, for you, it's a perfect opportunity for you to just give more love and forgive more and enjoy more, awaken more and perceive everything with unconditional love and acceptance and total innocence. And um, taking responsibility is, is realizing that your experience here doesn't depend on anyone else. It's nobody else's fault. You're not a victim. You're responsible for your own experience. You project. And, uh, and that, that means that you stop giving away your power. You're not a victim anymore. Um, you reclaim your power and realize that it's in your mind. This whole experience is in your mind and depends on your mind. That's why it's beautiful to be able to reprogram your mind, to be a, observe your, your ego and that programmed mind of, of illusion and separation and infuse it and see it, impregnate it with, uh, with total allowance and acceptance and love, more and more love and, and again, innocence and playfulness and um, gratitude. Gratitude is a high vibe. And, um, and there's this quote that happiness is a choice. And yeah, I believe that to be true. Many times it comes down to like, okay, here I am sitting in the present moment and I can choose like to smile a little bit and see things in a positive way. Again, we have to be careful that it's not a, a false positivity, uh, that it's not just like smiling on the surface while you have a lot of emotions below it that you haven't dealt with. So first of all, allow whatever emotion is there, sit with it in presence without judging it without getting lost in the stories that your ego will tell you about the emotion why it's there why it shouldn't be there why it's wrong when you just feel it and then don't get and, and after you felt it like and when you know after a while at the end of the day just don't get stuck in that emotion and just okay let it go and then now happiness is a choice now you choose to smile keep going keep enjoying the present moment and your personality will never be perfect um, it's always in this dual world persona the word comes either from Greek or Latin and means mask it's a word from theater and taking on different roles and characters in this play that life is like Shakespeare said and we're the actor we're not the different roles that we play and when you know that you're the actor when you know that you're the consciousness behind it then you can play with these roles um, understanding that you as a soul is perfect are perfect and um, and the personality doesn't never have it's never going to be enlightened it's never going to be happy with the present moment as it is so just let it be and understand that you're 
that's not who you are. And the ego equals feeling to suffering. Saying I feel to the ego means I suffer because it's conditioned with what's happened in the past and the emotions you have felt in the past that were not pleasant. But when but feeling doesn't have to be unpleasant if you just totally accept it and feel it and and don't judge it and you don't get lost in the stories that the mind will tell you about that the ego will tell you about the emotions and then on the other side of those maybe initial not so pleasant emotions is the true feeling which is love we can only know god or universal love divine consciousness if we feel it we're here to feel to have that experience to feel and uh, otherwise god is just a letter i mean uh, a word three letters a concept an idea okay what do i do with that no we're here to feel it And uh, that's the reason I took ayahuasca for the first time in 2015 because I was very shut off and didn't feel anything. And lately, I feel so much. And it feels so good to feel. Even when I cry, I can enjoy that because I'm alive and I'm, my heart is open. Energy flows freely through my energy centers, my chakras. And after crying, letting it out, then I can really feel all the pleasant things more too. I can feel the nature. I can feel the sun and truly feel more. And the world of, is full of distraction, uh, distractions for, in order for us not to feel. And many times it feels more tempting to escape. Sometimes we take drugs to feel more because we know that, you know, it's nice to feel. Sometimes other drugs, like for example, alcohol maybe is there too, in order not to feel as an escapism. Other drugs too. Or sugar, which has been more in my case. Uh, and in order not to feel but the emotions will catch up with you sooner or later or and in the meantime they won't allow you to truly feel uh, enjoyment so that's another um, strategy of the ego um, don't feel because it equals suffering no it doesn't that's another illusion of the ego do feel and the ego also says i can't i i, I don't know i'm not capable of being more conscious or feeling more that's another defense it has it's a victim of whatever happens and thinks that it can't become more conscious but yes you can so starting now right now in this very moment i am open to coaching sessions for the past year and a half i've been taking a course first in it's called integration and meditation and then it's called fa uh, facilitation facilitating and I had a coach, an amazing coach, and it's a school called uh, La Escuela del Perdón, School of Forgiveness. And it's not the kind of forgiveness that's like, oh, you did something wrong, but I'm gonna forgive you because I'm a, the bigger person or whatever. Uh, it's the forgiveness of just changing your perspective, reprogramming your mind to see with eyes of total innocence and love. And in these sessions, um, if you as a client come to me I'm not gonna judge you and give you a diagnosis and say you have this and that or you're wrong in this and that way and this it has to be fixed again like the personality trying to fix itself or sometimes in mainstream psychology that's that's what they'll do and I mean we've tried this for so many years and it doesn't really work maybe for some people and on some levels it might work for a time or whatever but in these sessions, which is truly miraculous, is that um, you as a client, you bring up whatever conflict you're experiencing, small or big, being involving other people or uh, uh, or just involving you, something you have on your mind that doesn't allow you to enjoy the moment. It can be very hard or it can be subtle. Um, whatever comes up from your heart, you start with a meditation to tune in. Usually, I'll do whatever I feel guided to do, but usually we start with the meditation and then you, you bring up whatever is on your heart, whatever is on your mind, and we look at it with innocence and love. And I realize that whatever you bring up, it's not something that's just yours. Everything is of ev from everyone. And whatever you bring up is something from my own subconsciousness that is asking for forgiveness and, and, and for love and innocence. And... Um, 
So you bring it up and we feel it. And I might, I do everything I can to understand your story also, but I don't have to really understand in what forms, in what story your ego tells yourself about the emotions. What's important is that I really en- understand your emotions and emotions are the same regardless of your culture or your language. It's a universal language we all feel. And we have all felt all the emotions. So I, I feel the emotion with you and the, and we totally let the emotion be and meditate and sit with it, shining the light of consciousness on it. And I also don't try to come up with a good tip to give you from my own story or my own personal small self that has helped me. That might emerge too and come up maybe in certain times. But most importantly, I will sit there and I will feel with you and I'll say, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say now to help guide this person. This is something that, for example, the Dalai Lama does too. And and it, it allows you to, to put the ego aside and that way really channel um, some thoughts and, and channel um, words and, and a, a healing emotion that comes from the universe. It's not me. And it's very transformative and it's a blessing. I'm like amazed at how it works and how how just shining the light of consciousness and acceptance on on these conflicts make them dissolve and raises your vibration, allows you to to feel more and open up more and and feel more gratitude and be more happy and enjoy life more. It's really beautiful. And in the beginning, I was so worried about like, what am I going to say? I kind of wanted to have like a list of things to say or advice, but it's also becoming um, um, accepting silence. If nothing comes up, then nothing comes up and we just sit with the feeling. But most of the times when when I do that and let go of the fear, then I will channel some some really useful things is the universe you're actually like opening up to the universe both of us sitting there understanding that we're one mind bringing these conflicts up to shine the light of consciousness of it on it and and it transforms it beautifully into love Uh, so i invite you to contact me for these sessions i'm probably open gonna open up group sessions as well and uh you can write me an email on uh, Eric Set, so E R I K Z as in Zebra, E T T at Outlook.com. Or write me on Instagram. I'm probably going to change my name. I wanted it to be just Kiro, um, but it was taken, so it will be Kiro with some number, with some numbers there probably. Um, but as of now, I haven't changed it. So as of now, if you don't already have me on Instagram, you can add me on Kiro Zen Zone. So K I R O Z as in Zebra, E N Z. As in Zebra, O-N-E, Kiru Zen Zone. On Instagram, you can write me there too, and we'll set up a meeting. It will be um, online through WhatsApp or Skype or FaceTime, and um, we'll be. You know, it's very transformational. I truly invite you to do that. Regardless if you have big conflicts or small, or if you don't feel like you can enjoy the present moment fully, then. Um, I invite you to this uh, with an open heart. Um, Yes, that's what I wanted to share today. I extend so much love. Big hugs. Full of love from me and my cat, Kadoish, here in Brazil. Watching some monkeys right now. I don't know if you can hear them. Just the birds right now. And uh, we'll stay in touch. Keep enjoying the present moment. Focusing on feeling and gratitude and letting be. Allowing the present moment. Aho. Amen. House.